So, therefore, the right pneumoenteric recess, infradiaphragmatic part, is overlapped by ventrally corded lobe of liver. Therefore, because of the presence of corded lobe of liver, just dorsal to it, posterior to it, there will be the infradiaphragmatic part of right pneumoenteric recess. And therefore, it will form the upper recess of the lesser side or upper recess of omental bursa. Now, step 2. This was step 1, development of the right pneumoenteric recess. Step 2 will be the development of primitive omental bursa. Once again, blue color. Please draw here, dorsal to the stomach. Remember, posterior to the stomach. If you just show a pouch, this pouch, and here, draw it in a dotted manner to show that it is dorsal to stomach. This pouch, which has developed, I'll just give it a color. This will develop where? In the dorsal mesogastrium, just behind the stomach. Therefore, in the dorsal mesogastrium, behind the stomach, there will be development of a pouch which will extend here. I will show this extension. It will extend to the left. This is left. This is right. Extending to the left. Name of this will be, the name of this structure, this pouch-like structure, we give it as primitive omental bursa. Please name it as primitive omental bursa. Then, what will happen is that, it will have a mouth. The mouth of this primitive omental bursa here I will show it that this primitive omental bursa, the mouth will be located just on the right hand side of the primitive cavity. This is the mouth. And I will show it that this mouth has a fold like this. Now this mouth is exactly present just below right pneumoenteric recess. So therefore, we need to connect this right pneumoenteric recess with this mouth like this. And this is the connection. So therefore, just below the right pneumoenteric recess, this is the mouth of the primitive omental bursa. The mouth is directed to the right side, but basically this primitive omental bursa will pass posteriorly, dorsal to the stomach. It will grow towards the left before rotation of stomach. Remember, these are the changes which are taking place before rotation of stomach. Now, therefore, this mouth of primitive omental bursa is guarded by two. One and two fold these two folds so the name of these two folds will be please note it down the name of these two folds will be this will be known as the superior gastro pancreatic fold superior gastro pancreatic fold and this one will be the inferior gastro pancreatic fold these are the two folds which will guard these two folds will guard the opening. Now, the superior and inferior gastropancreatic folds will contain, this is a gross anatomy question also, one liner, one sentence, one mark question answer. They will contain the left gastric artery and hepatic artery respectively. The superior and inferior gastropancreatic fold will contain the superior gastropancreatic fold will contain left gastric artery, inferior gastropancreatic fold will contain hepatic artery, note it down. So here, this is the stage 2, now kindly write it down. In stage 2, there will be development of primitive omental bursa, dorsal to the stomach. This bursa is directed towards the left side. This change will take place before rotation of stomach. Then the mouth of this primitive omental bursa will be present on the right side. This primitive omental bursa is present caudal to right pneumoenteric recess. It is connected with the right pneumoenteric recess. Then the mouth of primitive omental bursa which is directed on the right side is guarded by two folds. They are superior gastropancreatic fold and inferior gastropancreatic folds. Underline it. Superior gastropancreatic fold will contain left gastric artery 
and inferior gastropancreatic fold will contain hepatic artery. Then we show that what will happen is there will be rotation of stomach. And for the rotation of stomach, what we need is we need once again two more diagrams. So please draw alongside with me these two diagrams. Before we draw these two diagrams, we will draw here the first stage, we will draw here a small portion of liver. Behind that we shall draw the fusiform stomach and behind that we will draw here once again in the midline only spleen and we will connect them we are going to connect them blue color i will use these connections see here we are going to connect them with the help of ventral and dorsal mesenteries this is what we have to draw and then over here what we show is from here the posterior lateral abdominal wall this will connect with the anterior abdominal wall once again from here anterior lateral abdominal wall and this will be dorsal abdominal wall here it is reflected to the spleen once again it will cover the spleen it will cover the stomach once again it will pass between stomach and liver cover the liver and join with this because of lack of space, it is oblong, otherwise it should be transverse. It should be transverse. We have drawn this diagram previously also. So therefore, <clears throat> these are the two peritoneal cavities, the two peritoneal sac, right and left peritoneal cavities. These are the peritoneal cavities or peritoneal sac, right and left. So these two structures will develop into the greater sac. Now, these are the reflections of dorsal mesentery. So therefore, naturally, these reflections are converted into, if you name this reflection, these reflections will be known as the falciform and coronary ligaments of liver, ventral mesogastrium. Then, this structure, once again, ventral mesogastrium, that is the lesser omentum between liver and stomach. Then, the structure dorsal, in the dorsal mesogastrium, because of the development of spleen, we have seen that spleen is a mesenchymal organ. It will take its, it, it will start its development within the dorsal mesogastrium, dorsal to stomach. So therefore, this ligament between stomach and spleen will be known as the gastrosplenic ligament, and the ligament behind the spleen will be known as lino-renal ligament. Now, what will happen is, in the next diagram, we are going to show rotation has taken place. So therefore, we need to show the rotation. So what we will do is, first I will rub this, I will create some space over here and I will show that the lever is present at uh, this level. The lever is present at this level. This is what I will show. <coughs> I will mention it as lever. Then I will show that the stomach which has rotated this rotation has taken place. So the right surface of the stomach will go dorsally. And then over here I will show that the spleen which is lying immediately dorsal to the stomach, that is what I will show here. The hilum of the spleen of course is medially. This is how I will show the spleen. Now what we do is we connect it. We connect all these structures. So naturally from here, falciform ligament, first I will draw the entire la anterior, lateral and dorsal abdominal wall. Here also I will complete it as anterior, lateral and dorsal abdominal wall over here. Now this falciform ligament over here, it is reflected from the liver. Then once again it will go back to the stomach, complete its covering of the stomach, go back gastrosplenic cover it and then it will form the lino-renal ligament. Same thing goes over here, on the right hand side it will complete all this peritoneal fold, then the lesser omentum, then it will cover the stomach, then once again gastrosplenic ligament, once again lino-renal ligament and it will continue on the dorsal abdominal wall. Now what we show here is with an arrow, here we show 
preparation of stomach has taken place. I will make you note down the points. Now here what we show it is the, the arrow is pointing towards, write it down, primitive omental bursa behind the stomach. Please note and mark it. This is what it has taken place. Then I will complete it with the statements which you can note it down. 